In this tutorial, I will continue explaining how AwareIM supports forms, and I will show you some other capabilities not covered in the previous tutorials, such as multi-attribute cells, references represented as drop-downs, swap selects, and others. Please make sure that you watch the forms tutorial before watching this one. Let me show you first how to work with multi-attribute form cells. Let's look at an example. Here I have a simple application that has a custom business object. The custom object has first name, last name, address, and other attributes. I have created a form to enter the details of the customer. This is how the form looks like. Suppose we want to move the state attribute next to the postcode attribute. One way to do this would be to create a new column and put the state attribute in the new column. However, a quicker way is to put the state attribute into the same cell as the postcode attribute. To do this, I click on the state attribute and then drag and drop it into the cell of the postcode attribute. There's a couple of problems here. First of all, the state control is a bit too close to the postcode. This is because of where I am created two columns for this cell, and by default, the columns have the same width. So we need to make the first column a little bigger, and the second one a little smaller. The second problem is that there is too much distance between the label of the state control and the control itself. Let's move the control a little closer to the cell and change the label column width of the state attribute. To do this, we select the multi-attribute cell and go to its attributes property. Here we can change properties of the individual attributes that the cell consists of. Let's start with the column width. By default, it is blank on both attributes, which corresponds to 50% each. Let's change it to 55 and 45% respectively. It is enough to change the column width of the postcode attribute and the other column width will be changed automatically. Let's now change label column width of the state attribute. By default it is blank, which corresponds to 90 pixels. Let's change it to 60 pixels. Well, this looks a little better. There are a few other options that you can specify for multi-attribute cells. You can put them in their own group box, for example, by specifying a title of the group box. And now, because of the group box, we need to increase the width of the first column yet again. Let me explain now how AwareIM represents references on forms. For more details about references, please watch the Relationships tutorial. References for which multiple allowed checkbox is ticked or multiple references are shown very differently than references where this checkbox is not ticked or single references. Let's start with single references. Because only one value can be selected for a single reference, the most common way to represent such a reference is using a drop-down. If you select this option, a variable will automatically populate the drop-down with all possible choices based on the data available in the system. The user will then choose the appropriate value. 
Let's look at an example. In this simple application, we will be registering communication with the customer. There is a simple object to do this called contact node. It stores a reference to the customer with whom contact has been registered and it also stores date, subject and other details of the communication. When registering contact, the user will be choosing from a list of existing customers using a drop-down. So let's go to the presentation properties of the customer attribute. We will change the widget to drop-down or combo box. I will specify a width of 250 pixels In the list of displayed attributes, I need to tick attributes of the customer object that will be displayed in the drop-down. Usually you select just one attribute. If you select more than one, they will be separated by space. Here I will select first name and last name. We will also sort customers by, by the first name and last name so that it's easier to find them in the drop-down. I will leave Generate Add New button as Yes and for Fetch Records I will specify Fetch All Records at once. I will explain what it means a little later. Let's see how this looks in the browser. So let's log into the system. Note that I have already created a few customers here. Let's now create a contact node for some customer. I click on the new contact node button and as you can see uh, where I am displays the drop down automatically populated with a list of all customers in our system and sorted by their last and first names. The user can also click on this button here to create a new customer on the fly. So we can pick the customer we want and create some contact node. Let's now go back to the presentation properties of the customer attribute. There are a few things we can change here. Suppose that we have thousands or millions of customers in our system. If we select Fetch All Records at once, they will all be displayed in the drop-down unless we specify page size, in which case they will be fetched in pages. Still, searching through thousands of customers to find the one you want is not a good idea. In this case, a better approach is to select Fetch Records as User Types option. I will show it to you in a minute. We can also specify the text that will be displayed when there is no value in the drop-down. And we can also filter customers in case we want to include not all customers, but customers matching certain criteria in the drop-down. In this case, we will need to provide a query to filter the customers. Let's see now how our Fetch Records as User Types option works. So when we log in and create a new contact node, we can see the Please Start Typing text. When we click on the drop-down, it shows nothing, but if we start typing, it will show only the customers that match the characters we type. You can also represent single references as a grid. or table of items, 
just like multiple references, except that the table will only show one item. You can even embed a form of a reference into the, into the form of the parent object. If you want to simultaneously enter a parent and its related object. Let's see now how we can represent multiple references. I have already shown in the forms tutorial how a where I am can represent multiple references as a table of items and how it can show references as tabs at the bottom of a form. In this tutorial I will show you other options. A grid is not the only way of representing multiple references. If a list of possible choices is not overly large, we could choose a multi-select drop-down, for example. In this application, a custom object can be associated with one or more companies. So we have the company's attribute that represents this relationship. As you can see, the multiple allowed checkbox is ticked. Overall, there will not be that many companies in the system, so I will choose multi-select drop-down as a visual element for this relationship. The drop-down will show the name of the company and it will be 350 pixels wide. Let's see how this works. When I log into the system in a browser and create a new customer, I can now associate the customer with one or more companies using this drop-down. When I click on the drop-down, it shows me all the companies in the system. I can now select one or more companies that will be associated with the customer. Another visual element to represent multiple references with is checkbox list. With this element, the system displays all possible choices with a checkbox next to it. The user can then select the options he wants. And this is how it works. We can see here that the system displays all possible companies and there is a checkbox next to each company. I can select the ones that I want the customer to be associated with. Yet another option is swap select. I'll show you how this works. Swap select shows two lists, the list of all available companies on the left and the list of selected companies on the right. I use arrow buttons to move from one list to another. Selected companies in the right list will be associated with the customer. You can also use other options such as trees, charts and custom list, which are explained in the respective tutorials. For more details, please refer to the user guide.